Well, today I finally heard back from the, uh, this minute, I heard back from the Australian Human Rights Commission, from the Sex Discrimination Commissioner. It's not the Sex Discrimination Commissioner herself that's written back to me, but Alison Agarwal, A-W-G-A-R-W-A-L, Director of the Sex Discrimination uh, Unit. No, she's a woman. Maybe they should have some men there. Maybe it's time. Genital mutilation of boys in Australia. I'll read the letter. We'll see uh, what sort of, uh, if I've been uh, given, you know, what they're going to do for me, what they're going to do for boys in Australia. Genital mutilation of boys in Australia. Thank you for your correspondence of 6th of October 2011 and your follow-up email of 28th of October 2011. Yes, I had to email them because they were, you know, they didn't reply to me uh, as soon as they should have. I'm sure they're supposed to reply within a week. I waited about two weeks and I didn't hear anything. Address to the Sex Discrimination Commissioner regarding your personal experience of genital mutilation. The Commissioner has requested me to respond to you on her behalf. How uh, and, and nice and considerate of her busy woman with a uh, human rights uh, problem, you know, human rights violations, I'm sure, of women. Yeah, they want to be concerned about boys too, you know. Thank you for sharing with us. <coughs> Thank you for sharing with us the problems you have experienced as a result of being genitally mutilated. So they acknowledge I was genitally mutilated <coughs> as a baby. Excuse me, as a baby in 1954. Thank you for sharing with us the problems you have experienced as a result of being genitally mutilated as a baby in 1954. We are sorry to hear about the difficulties that you have sustained as a result over the course of your life. They're sorry, but will they do anything to defend boys from genital mutilation or human rights violation? Let's read on. I acknowledge, so they're going to <laughs> acknowledge, but will they do anything? I acknowledge that your story is a personal one and that it may have been difficult for you to share. How, can see, how, how symp sympathetic <laughs> of you. I understand you are concerned about the continuation of this practice that is, a human rights violation. I understand that you are concerned about the continuation of this practice in Australia and the differential and unfavourable treatment for boys you identify is a serious concern. Well, she's saying it's a serious concern. She's acknowledging it's a serious concern. I call it a very serious concern. In response to your concerns, I would like... I'm going to be fobbed off now. I'm going to be fobbed off. They're not going to do anything to defend me. They're just going to direct me to some other department. And they're not going to, uh, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to actively do anything to defend a little boys, but they'll keep defending little girls. Well, vociferously anyway. In response to your concerns, I would like to bring to your attention the Australian government's recent release of its national men's health policy, which you can find at blah 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 healthgovernment.au whatever men's health policy while there is a supporting paper on reproductive health issues the policy does not currently address the issue of male circumcision i don't want to be directed elsewhere i've gone to the fucking human rights and equal opportunity commission to make a complaint to the sex discrimination commissioner on grounds of gender about genital mutilation of boys a physical you know and barbaric human rights violation upon the human person but I'm being directed elsewhere. While there is currently, yes, while there is a supporting paper on reproductive health issues, the policy does not currently address the issue of male circumcision. If you feel comfortable doing so, I would encourage you to raise this issue with the Department of Health and Aging. Oh, you know, I've, I've got to go over to other places, uh, not the Human Rights uh, Commission. I, I'm, I'm supposed to address my, a human rights uh, pro violation elsewhere. I would encourage you to raise this, this issue with the Department of Health and Aging. You can direct your correspondence to Kate Hurden, Hurden H-E-I-D-E-N, Director of Gender and Reproductive Health at blah blah blah. The Commissioner, yes, here's, here she is, she's going to say she's got her hands full now and she can't do anything because she's too busy, but of course she'll always be able to defend little girls uh, against genital mutilation. But she's got her hands, her hands are too full to defend boys. The Commissioner receives information on a range of issues where women and men face gender inequality. And I suppose she's probably sitting up there with a the clitoris intact, probably. She probably is. She probably is. 
Yes, she's probably sitting up there with her clitoris intact. The Commissioner receives information on a range of issues where women and men face gender inequality. Of course, I don't know that her, gen her, her clitoris is intact, but I suspect it is, and I suspect the clitoris, clitori, clitorises of all the past sex discrimination commissioners were intact. Uh, um, yes, not non-mutilated, non-severed, you know, with, a, with whatever. As uh, she has, yes, I should be talking with this, shouldn't I? As uh, she has limited resources. Yes, she's got limited resources. As uh, she has limited resources, she is unable to address the full range of issues. The full range of issues. She's un unable to address the full range of issues. Something as basic as being <laughs> genitally mutilated, you know, and sitting up there with her own fucking clitoris intact and... You know, not having the, the you know, the, the, the resources. She reckons she hasn't got the resources. However, the views you have shared with will be carefully considered. Oh, how nice of them. Should the Australian Human Rights Commission undertake any work <laughs> in this area in the future? Should they undertake any work in this area in the future? And of course, they're not going to under undertake any area, any work in that area, are they? except for girls. Yeah. Further, as you have completed a complaint form alleging sex discrimination, I have forwarded your form to the Commission's Complaints Handling Unit for their consideration. Oh, I'm going to be considered. Am I? You know, what are they going to do for me? What are they going to do for me? Thank you once again for bringing this issue to our attention, and we regret that we cannot do more to assist at this point. I think, yes, yours sincerely, Alison Agarwal, Director of Sex Discrimination Unit. I think it's time. We had a male sex discrimination commissioner. If you go to Wiki, you'll find there's only ever been acting <laughs> male sex discrimination commissioners. In other words, they were just Clayton sex discrimination commissioners. They're only temporary ones. Anyway, I'll put up the video that I made a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't going to put it up because I thought, you know, I was going too far to say <laughs> we should have a male sex discrimination commissioner. But from today, I'm over it. I'm no longer a feminist from today. My feminist days are over. I'm not going to be sympathetic on women's issues anymore. I can see where, what women are interested in. They're only interested in, uh, you know, what they're interested in. I'm going to be interested in what I'm interested in from now on. Yeah, I'm not going to be sympathetic anymore. I've changed. This, this has changed me. See ya. Bye. So, as I said in a previous video about genital mutilation of boys in Australia, uh, the Australian government has, for the past 15 or 16 years, defended females against uh, genital mutilation, but they've not defended little boys against uh, male genital male <laughs> uh, male genital mutilation. I don't know what I mean with that yet. Male genital mutilation. And on top of that, the uh, Human Rights uh, Commission, the Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission in Australia, they have their own uh, sex discrimination commissioner. It's always been a woman. It's always been a woman, hasn't it? It's always been a woman, the sex discrimination commissioner. And as I made previous mention of, the uh, Sex Discrimination commissioner, uh, Commissioners have only been vociferous about female genital mutilation. They have not been vociferous about male genital mutilation. It occurs to me that maybe it's time we had a man in the job. Maybe it's time we had a man running the uh, Sex Discrimination section of the Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission. A man might get things done. I mean, I mean... I'm a man, and I mean, what, what has the Sex Discrimination Commissioner done for me as far as male genital mutilation is concerned? What, what have they done? She, she after she after she. What have they done? Maybe it's time we let a man take, put a man in the driver's seat. Maybe it's time. We might be able to see what a man can do. The women have been in the driver's seat for long enough, maybe. They've done nothing for me. They've defended females against uh, female genital mutilation, but they've not defended males. I think maybe it's time we let a man get on with a job. That's what I've got to say.